first deliberate attack on a cultural target, a mass bombing of historic city, was the RAF attack which incinerated over 80% of the old timber built town of Lubeck on Palm Sunday, March 28, 1942. This attack by over 200 heavy bombers was ordered by South African commander of Bomber Command, Air Marshal Arthur Harris, as an experiment to test whether bombing timber frame buildings could start an inferno large enough to be used as an easy aiming point for later waves of bombers. I wanted my crews to be well blooded, as they say in fox hunting, to have a taste of success for a change. A devastating hail of 33,000 bombs with a weight of approximately 180,000 kilograms fell on the medieval city. More than 80% of historical buildings were victims of the flames and 10,000 people were left homeless. 300 people were killed and 650 injured. 700,000 cubic metres of rubble were left. Afterwards, Lubick was fortunately preserved as an international Red Cross city. Adolf Hitler was furious that Lübeck had been attacked with its minimal protection and on the 14th of April 1942 he informed Luftwaffe command he wanted a change in policy of air warfare. Order 55672-42. This order later became known as the Bay Decker Raids. <laughs> The chief winter spa in Britain is a handsome city of 68,000 inhabitants with a mild and sedative climate. Beautifully situated in the sheltered valley of the Avon and on the slopes of the surrounding hills. And it is unrivalled among provincial English towns for its combination of archaeology, historic, scenic and social interest. It is a city of crescents and terraces built in a substantial Palladian style of bath stone and rising tier above tier to a height of about 6,000 feet. Bath owes its external appearance very largely to the architect John Wood and his son of the same name who set the style of architecture that others followed and Bath is an admirable specimen of 18th century town planning. This extract comes from the German Baedecker Guide published in 1937 and gives a pre-war view of Bath's beauty and historic importance. It is worth noting that at some point that year the German Tourist Board contacted Bath City Council to ask whether they could be sent some street maps of the city. These were apparently used to assist in the planning of the Bay Decker Raids five years later. The Luftwaffe had just over 80 combat and training aircraft available for the attacks on Bath. These were mainly Dornier 17 aircraft which had returned to their temporary bases from the raid on Exeter on Friday the 24th. They had left Exeter just before 2am on Saturday the 25th of April. The others were Ju-88 aircraft which had flown down to France from Holland on the morning of the 25th of April. The Germans knew that once the aircraft arrived over the city they would be able to fly, fly around freely because Bath had no anti-aircraft guns or barrage balloons at this, that, that point. This meant they could machine gun the streets and use shallow dive bombing to maximum effect. We roar down from the sky, now the first flares from our leaders light up the land like day. Beneath, the River Avon winds through the country like a silver thread. Here below us is the Great Loop, in the middle of which lies the town. And now, to the first small incendiaries go down. Suddenly, in front of us, a great towering flame appears, which dazzles us with its flaming red, even in the cockpit. Okay, welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, where are we? Well, we're in Bath. Um, I'm going to try and uh, have a look round. We'll show you uh, the damage that was caused during the Baydecker raids in World War II on Bath. 
Now this was the 25th, 26th and the 27th of April 1942. It was a revenge attack for uh, an IF raid uh, into Germany. So Hitler ordered the Luftwaffe to target um, cultural and historic places and obviously Bath was one of them. So we'll have a look around see if I can uh, transpose old photos onto what we have now and see uh, what damage was done.